Former President Trump is also facing legal issues in several other cases. He pleaded not guilty to 34 felony counts of falsifying business records in New York. And the DOJ is looking into Trump's actions leading up to January 6th. CBS News congressional correspondent Scott McFarland joins us now. So, Scott, how serious could possible charges be in the January 6th investigation compared to what we're seeing in the documents case? Well, the special counsel who's about to make history Tuesday afternoon with the first federal indictment of a former U.S. president is showing only half of his cards in the process. The special counsel, Jack Smith, is investigating not just the alleged mishandling, an obstruction of an investigation into classified records, but has also been investigating here in Washington efforts to overturn the 2020 election. That's what the grand jury in Washington has been talking about and hearing about, presumably, from all the many witnesses, including Trump's former vice president, Mike Pence. Those cards have not been shown. But in essence, Jack Smith really hasn't shown anything. The only thing we've learned about court dates and court times originated from the news of Donald Trump when he announced it on his social media platform. We're waiting to see if this indictment is unsealed for this classified records case, potentially by the end of tonight, potentially over the weekend, ahead of Tuesday. It'll tell us quite a bit about what's being alleged and what this investigation has shown, but it's only showing part of what Jack Smith's been looking into, the January 6th investigation also unprecedented, potentially sweeping in nature, covering any number of issues, including what gave rise to that unprecedented attack on the Capitol. You know, Scott, you raise uh, an important point, which is that so much of this information, at least initially, has come to us from the former president himself uh, in the case of that Manhattan criminal case. Uh, he, he was publicizing it even more uh, than, uh, than prosecutors. Speaking of that criminal case, it's expected to begin in March of next year. What should we expect to see between now and then for the New York City case about falsifying business records? There's nothing on the calendar, but this is a tricky calendar to monitor. This is not like the federal court system where everything is posted on a court website or easily retrievable through an electronic docket. In New York, you actually have to go to the courthouse and check for things, and there are some protocols in which Filings can be made or meetings can be held and the public not be alerted about it. Um, all that being said, you now have two different trains on two different tracks mm -hmm. with the same passenger on each. You have a case in New York set for trial next spring, right in the heart of the Republican primary season. And you have in the federal court system in the Southern District of Florida what's known as a rocket docket, a fast moving by federal court standards set of judges protocols and cases. These two things could merge in the same part of the same calendar, the same time of year. Something's going to have to give. This could impact the Manhattan case. All mm -hmm. right. So speaking of the calendar, there is also the Fulton County, Georgia investigation into alleged efforts to undermine the 2020 presidential election. Scott, when do we expect a charging decision in that case? The indications we've been given is that it's a summer decision that's coming, which means, you know, any time between, let's say, dinner time tonight <laughs> and the end of August or Labor Day. Um, the best trajectory from our reporting is that it's likely to come late summer from Fulton County, a decision, if not a broad set of announcements. Um, to add that as a third train track with a third train, potentially with the same passenger, something's going to have to give here, because whether he's a presidential candidate touring the nation or not, Having multiple different criminal fires burning at once is a challenge that the courts are deferential to. They are likely to be more inclined to accede to any request from the former president's defense teams to slide hearings, slide deadlines. If it's known there are multiple criminal cases in different jurisdictions at different levels, local and federal, happening at the same time, which gets us back to the first question. What's next in the January 6th investigation? Does that pop here in Washington anytime soon? You can't rule it out, but the only sense we're getting is that the first person to tell us might be Donald Trump himself. Well, um, you know, we as you're talking about all these different uh, trials that are potentially going to be taking place simultaneously to the former president campaigning, uh, we heard from the former attorney general, um, Bill Barr, that he thought that the records case was potentially the most consequential for the president. Is, is there any sense from your sources, is that still the prevailing wisdom, that this, this latest indictment is the one that is most potentially damaging to the former president? In the sense we keep getting and the guidance we get from legal analysts and from those close to the cases is that 
it's at least the most simple, the most clear cut, the most clearly defined is perhaps the best phrase to use. The January 6th investigation, the special counsel investigating efforts to overturn the 2020 elections, could have just the broadest goalposts from which to look through, not just the efforts to change the election results and to sow doubt about the election results, but all, what happened to all the money that was raised after November 3rd, 2020 on those baseless claims? What gave rise to the insurrection? Was there coordinating and planning with conspirators? You see how quickly this gets complex. In Florida, what Bill Barr was alluding to is it's not just, in his mind, the most consequential, but also those goalposts are narrower. There's a subset of accusations that have been consistent from start to finish, and we'll see if those are reflected in the charging documents once they are finally unsealed. All right, Scott McFarland keeping his calendar clear for all of this. <laughs> Scott, thank you so much. We appreciate sure. it.